Hello everyone, and welcome back to Ladder Plays Dead Cells. Last episode we crossed a threshold that we've never been able to pass before, and it was exciting. But I had to take a little break, I had something to eat, I watched a couple of videos just because, uh, you know. Last time I did this, I decided of a recording session, adrenaline filled my body because that boss fight, I got completely quiet during it, making only like panic noises. And I fear this time will be the same. So as a word of warning, welcome to Dead Cells. It's probably going to be quiet for a little bit. Let's get into this boss fight. <clears throat> and if she is different than the last time I fought her, which it doesn't look like it, it looks like this is a uh, familiar ground to me. Whew. All right, let's do this. The assassin. Okay, 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 okay. I want to make sure that I can time it in the future. This was a lot of an easier fight, I gotta say, than last time. Last time it took me a bit longer, but my heart is racing, guys. <sighs> and another new bow, and it's the Ice Crossbow, which we have seen in a daily run, if I'm not mistaken. <sighs> so the Assassin, she has a breakpoint as well, much like the, the incomplete one, where she enters a berserk. And last time around, I spent most of my time dodging those hook shots he fires at you and then she pulls you in which was what happened this time as well um and i got a little bit better at avoiding said hook lines now she's still not easy as well as those falling blades from the ceiling that i still find them very hard to spot even now all right let's see what else we want at the moment everything we get will be upgraded Shots pierce the first target, deal more damage to a burning target. <laughs> wow. Don't mind if I do. Let's see what else we can get leveled up here. Let's, uh. Let's get some melee weapons in there. Banner's blade is already done. Maybe not, actually. Maybe get some ranged weapons in there because we don't have that many ranged weapons that are buffed up yet. Now, I like the infantry crossbow, so let's do that one. Bang. Let's also get the electric whip up because it's one of my favorite ranged weapons. Let's uh, get a double nudged bow just because, I don't know. I haven't used it that much, but it looks interesting every time I try to use it. And let's also let's let's take something else. A weapon that I like. What is a weapon that I like and that I haven't upgraded yet? Take off sadistic cold. I don't know this one. The spiteful sword is I think when I'm below 50% HP. I don't know about the sadistic sword. That might be when a target is bleeding, it does more. Looking at these, I'm actually thinking that we might want to get one of the turrets that are better. So let's do that, and let's start working on one of the other turrets as well. Alright, a lot of stuff to pick from. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Poison targets for Sarah victims. Fires an arrow from behind you. Upon death, victims freeze, which is very nice. Just two arrows at once, and that one. Ooh. 
Now that is not bad at all. Are we willing to give up a fire synergy? Because at the moment, everything that we have outside of our firebrands does more damage when the target is on fire, which is something I haven't abused enough at all. I'm not going to visit you. Um, whenever you kill a boss, at least from what I can tell so far, you get the smith that can upgrade your items permanently to a higher degree. And I think that's definitely an interesting feat. All right, so this place, last time around, I got here off the recording session. I got into a spot of problem where I think I was fighting the next mini boss in order to get a new rune, which, as you might know, the runes allow you to use the abilities such as creating a root thing. Shop, you can deal with that fairly easily. Enemies burn when they die. Now we do lose our CC on this one. I'm still gonna get it. Just because it's plenty of levels higher. It still has the burning effect. Uh, it gets an extra arrow. And enemies burn when they die, which means it's a passive. Okay. And those are downstairs that you might have seen. They uh, can stab upwards, which is really annoying, actually. They also swipe multiple times if they swipe. They swipe uh, multiple times if they swipe in a horizontal direction, which makes them quite difficult. I haven't really figured out how they determine their attack pattern yet. All right, this place, I don't know what this is. Let's see what it is about. Okay. Staging area? Definitely staging area. I died? Why did I die? I don't understand. No. I don't understand. Also, we lost our frost crossbow, probably because I didn't even talk to the guy. I don't understand. Wow. Well, that's the end of that story then. Uh, let's start a new run. Straight off the bat. I'm not discouraged, guys. I'm, I'm just very confused as to why I ended up dying there to begin with. I said death by poison, but I didn't see any poison, and I thought I had a lot of health. I know they, they struck me as I was drinking as well, bringing my health a lot lower than on my like, but, you know, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Not necessarily. Well, new run, new chances. Let's see what we get. Now, this item I have used once. Uh, I'm not going to use it now, just because I don't think it's that good. It seems to do more damage when something is submerged in water. Something along those lines. But, um, getting back to the point. That is not likely to happen most of the time. Okay, let's go the proper way then. That is a shame, guys. I was looking forward to that run because it was looking really promising. And that was also not the encounter I died from. I did that encounter before with no um, with no stuff on the floor, rather. Ah, oh, damn it. That was unfortunate, guys. I'm a little bit upset, I got to say. I don't know if it was a bug, it doesn't, I don't think so. I have not encountered bugs in this game of that nature before, so I'd be surprised if I find them now. It's probably something to do with the fact that we were in the, on the floor and as soon as we got out, the poison ruptured or something along those lines, which means you're supposed to keep jumping, I imagine, maybe? It didn't seem like poisonous water and it didn't seem to attack us when we were stood in it for a while. And attacking is a dumb word for it, but I'm going to use it anyway. Alright. So it seems we're going to the sewers because I was uh, unwilling to spend my time in there. Let's get enemy damage near and deployed skill. 
So we want to maintain at least one deployable throughout all of this, which is not disastrously hard. And the better we upgrade our items, the more we upgrade them, the further we're going to be able to get, the easier as well. And I think definitely we're getting to the point where that is achievable to a degree. Alright, let's get free stealth and free level up, which we need because we haven't gotten any yet. Let's go back down. 11 seconds, so we're a little bit... There we go. It is a shame. We were doing really well, and if I had survived for a bit longer, I might be able to get the rune, which would hopefully allow us to do the jumpy thing that we've been missing out on so far, and we would use here as well. Oh, no, not here, actually. It is a shame. A great one, indeed. But nothing we will not recover from. As everyone starts new, everyone starts with hope. And we've never discovered what the fourth door does. So let's maintain that bigger in trying to knock on all those doors in the correct order. Now, you might not know, the hammer has a special ability where it... There we go. That one. The hammer has a special ability that where if it hits something that is above 75% HP, it guaranteed stuns them, which means it interrupts all attacks and activities of that target which makes it a great cc weapon for initiating but you do want to make sure that you can kill them hopefully within a single uh, combination come on we're taking a lot of unnecessary damage we would have died there if i hadn't been able to kill it off with that hit which would have been a shame indeed i still don't know the nature of the of the buffing system of this game because it seems to be a little bit on and off where whenever you gain or lose a buff I'm imagining time is just a main factor of losing the buff I suppose but why would you gain them more easily that's the question here Let's see where this goes to the right and it drops us a vape here the vape here is the first up that I believe we saw on this channel and it does a limited time of critting right after rolling which makes it a passive procking item to say the least because you're rolling all the time to get those invincibility frames up all right bye bye but i have discovered in my time of using it where i first thought it was rather way too strong i've discovered that i found myself luck what was this give me the rune I want my rune. Hmm, okay. So I have encountered that guy before. I don't know if it was on video or not. Oh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm still... My heart is at a loss of last run. I was greatly enjoying it and I was hopeful. Ugh. I'm probably going to stop recording Dead Cells for today after this. Maybe not maybe, maybe not for today, but at least for now. Because i got a stream to prepare and i got to go to the shop still as well. To get some supplies for when we actually do start streaming. And I hope you guys would enjoy joining my stream. I stream every Sunday so far from 4 to 8 p.m. GMT plus 2. I don't know what that is converted. I know British time is one hour behind us, which would make it from 3 to, nine, three to 7. But I don't know any other time zones off the top of my head. And if you guys start pouring in from different parts of the world, I will most surely add a timetable to the stream page itself so you can see it and it would be useful for you. I am considering... Uh, Short spears all enemies. Let's take that. Um, so far, I have been um, thinking about streaming more often than not, just because I find myself wanting to play the game I've dedicated to stream a lot this week, and I had to neglect, well, not neglect myself, I had to deny myself of playing said game, just because I didn't want to, you know, rush ahead on Celeste. I wanted to be able to experience that game along with you guys. 
and not just record it blandly off topic. And so far, if I can restrict myself to only play that game once a week, I think I'm also gonna enjoy that game a lot more. Because I remember last week saying that I was a little bit upset with the. Um, Specifically, I was upset with the fact that Celeste seemed to kill you way more often than necessary, and that game is definitely a death is fun type of game. Which I'm normally not that fond of, but at the same time, I was also considering the fact that it's just a game that you want to play in portions as opposed to play it in bursts and in, in, in strikes like I do. Streaks, not strikes. I don't know what strikes means. And being such a type of game, I also consider the fact that it's much more fun for me as well. If I deny myself the game for a while, just to enjoy it more when I do finally get to play it. Because, let me tell you what guys, I am hyped for tonight. I am hopeful that some of you will join me. I'm hopeful that I'll get further than last week. That sounds like a weird thing, but I mean in the sense that I can make more progress because I'm already familiar with the controls from that one session. And I hope we can discover some of the story because it's a really interesting game. Let me tell you what though, that game is a magnet for copyright strikes. Even though I've read numerous sources where it said from the developers that Let's Plays are okay, loose uploads of the of the music are not. But since YouTube has no way to tell them apart, I have been hit with those copyright strikes regardless. And I have not seen a result of my disputes yet. And I'm not expecting any results of the disputes. I'm not expecting that they will revert the copyright claim on it just because a i'm a small fish and they don't care about small fish because it's not going to give them negative repercussions and i'm talking about youtube here. i'm not talking about the developers the developers have been incredibly nice about wanting to people to create let's plays and wanting to play there and they enjoy their game but there was just a problem that youtube does not play kindly with copyright laws and is fairly slow to respond in most of all situations. And it's hard to make exceptions as well. I mean, you gotta. Let's to play devil's advocate here. I would have to say that for a big company like YouTube to implement a short-term response to something like this is a little bit difficult because it would require exceptions in the system, which would potentially, if not secured, be able to be abused. And that's something that can't happen either. That item. Let's see where this goes. Further down we go, where we stop. I think the game will know. I am not wanting to talk about YouTube drama and stuff like that. I do enjoy following that sort of stuff myself to a degree, but I'm not I'm not about to make a channel like that on my own where I just talk about controversies and disputes and the stupidity of some companies because honestly, I'm not cynical enough for that. I'm quite cynical, mind you, but I'm just not I'm just not jaded enough to start wanting to hammer on companies in hopes of getting a, a, an effect. Because I don't think it would happen. Not from me, because I'm too small of a fish. At least for now. And even in the future, I don't think I want to commit myself to hating companies that I want to play the games from. Especially because A, it doesn't make it easier to enjoy those games. In fact, it makes it a little bit harder to reach them if you're aiming to get review copies. Which I definitely intend to do at certain points. It, one of the benefits of this type of situation is if I can get big enough, I can get review copies of certain games. And let me help you over the pass here. This is still assuming that I'll never get big. Because I'm not, like I said in a previous video, I'm not on the idea that I'm ever going to make it that big, that I'm going to start being influential like let's say Total Biscuit or Northern Lion or uh, Quill or those types of people. I've never, I'm not under the illusion that I'm going to be as big or influential as any of them. But I am under the illusion that if I put my heart and soul into this right now, right here, and if I try my best to be nice and get user friendly content out there. I'm confident that I can get to a point where I can at least house a couple of hundred, hopefully, subscribers and enjoy my life that much more. And probably not sustain myself off of it, which is a shame because, honestly, that's most people's dreams with that into this platform. Most people want to have that degree of success. Now, I'm... I don't know. I want that success, of course. There's no doubt in my mind I want that success. 
but my skepticism comes in more about my success probability because to start a YouTube channel in this day and age is a scary undertaking. Not scary because it's necessarily hard, but it's scary because it's difficult to get into a market that's already as saturated as this. And I already named some previous names, yeah, some sweet name dropping, about other YouTubers that are fairly influential and that are widely known, such as also the Oxcast are also one of those types of people. But I don't know. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think about this new form of band. So I'm just rambling off while I play a game. Just because I don't know. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit disheartened, honestly, and I'm kind of on autopilot, which is also why you're seeing me make a lot more mistakes and not talking about my planning as I go through certain scenarios. Because this game is a lot of fun, but it also, in a certain degree, the earlier stages, when you start playing this game more and more, start becoming second nature to a degree, where it's a lot, a lot easier to just autopilot your way through a section. And that's also a bit that's enjoyable. I'm sure people that play games like Dark Souls and stuff have the same sort of experience where the earlier stages where I struggle a lot because I have played Dark Souls. I've never beaten any of the Dark Souls, I don't think. I have committed myself to a couple of playthroughs, but never actually managing to finish it, losing interest just before. Uh, I think my friend said I was slightly past three quarters, so I had a couple of bosses left to do and some of the more difficult areas still to handle, but I definitely saw a good portion of the game. And I definitely think that people that PvP in that game or just play that game a lot, because that's Dark Souls is a big game, and it has a big community behind it as well. And I'm like, I don't think I'll ever get on that level. Honestly, not. Just because... Dark Souls is a game very much like this where dying is supposed to be fun or dying is supposed to be a learning experience. Learning, dying is repetition, repetition is mastery. And I do agree that Dead Souls is a lot like this, but Dead Souls is in a lot of ways a better experience for a person like me who wants not necessarily to have a commitment run to things. I'm a fairly stingy guy when it comes to my time commitment to games. I either play games way more than I should like over 30 hours in two days up to reaching like the border of the maximum I would be able to play those days meaning that I would only shut the game off when I was to go to sleep <coughs> and that's I realize unhealthy but it also means that if I can't get into a game like Dark Souls I don't make that much progress anymore and it's mostly to do with the fact that um I don't feel comfortable committing a lot to plenty of games that I'm not already invested in. And I experience games like Stardew Valley where I just don't find a natural ending point, meaning I start playing until I fall asleep, pretty much. Uh, I think my first session of Stardew Valley, I played until year two summer, and the game starts at year one spring. So I went a full year and a season in a single day after its purchase immediately and I didn't stop just not because I didn't want to stop or not that I didn't know how long I was playing playing because I was fairly aware at the, the second Easter event in that game how long I had been playing for but it's just those types of games much like Civ have the added effect that's like the one more turn effect that people like to call and it means that just, you want to just do that one last thing before you stop, but then next turn something else will appear like, oh, I could quickly do that and then I'll head off. Now, I'm kind of a stickler for those types of games and Dead Cells, to a degree, is really a lot like that. Where, just do another run, just do a quick daily, add it onto it, just don't worry about it. And... Let's see where we have to go because I actually can't find it. somewhere over there. I don't know what that. What is that icon? I don't know what that means. Let's find out. Let's see. As I was saying, those one turn, one more turn type games, they amuse me a great deal, just because they make me forget I'm playing a game to a degree. They make me able to think that I haven't been playing that long. 
I can enjoy myself for a while longer. And I think that's also where a lot of people get their draw for these types of games. Just because a lot of people, they want that sort of experience. Which is also why people play Skyrim and a lot of other things. But there is a little bit more of a natural ending point when you finish quests. But most quests tend to sneakily wave into different types of content. Which is certainly not a new aspect, mind you. But it's a successful one. I'm running a little bit out of ramble fuel just because I feel like I'm going a little bit in circles. I need to fast. I want to go to the shop. I'm excited for streaming. I'm excited to hopefully talk to you a bit about my streaming plans for the future as I hope to be able to stream some games of old. And not of old, like, oh, from my childhood NES type deal because those things don't really interest me that much to play on the channel. I want to play games that are. To a degree, I want a couple of channel attractors, such as Slay the Spire and Dead Cells to a degree, and RimWorld. And then I want channel fillers that are more passionate to me, such as uh, Inf Impossible Creatures. Impossible Creatures is a game that has almost no attention at all. And surprisingly, a lot of my friends have played it when I was younger. Now, Impossible Creatures is not going to get a lot of draw, and I realize this. And it's a little bit of a sad statement, but it's true. Impossible Creatures is just not the type of game that appeals to a lot of people and makes for a mass experience. Just because it's an RTS in a world where RTS is not a thing of the past necessarily. It's more a thing that's been changed over the years and adapted and there's only really one solid king and there's not really many alternatives. Most people that play Red Alert play it for the, the, spectacular, the spectacle of the story rather than um, one moment. Let me think. Let's get increased HP because we'll probably need it. But yeah, they play more for the spectacle of the story. That is a fair point. But people play StarCraft competitively also for the story. But a big portion plays it for arcade uh, and supremacy over other players. I'm not that type of gamer. And Impossible Creatures is the opposite of that. It's a story. It's more like the story versions of said RTS. It's like Northgard has a. a one now as well and it's just unknown to me what it is like because i haven't played it yet but i do intend to play it at some point i just don't know when yet <clears throat> and it definitely intrigues me because it looks like a really interesting story and i've enjoyed the game a lot when i played it we focus on this boss fight a little bit more you're going to break up into a new section at any moment, which makes your life a little bit bothersome. There you go. Halfway done. We're not doing a crazy amount of damage, so it's going a little bit slower than I would like. But at the same time, we're making proper headway. I'm doing some damage, and I'm managing to effectively dodge most of this hit. It's a boss fight I've practiced many a times over my time in Dead Cells. Um, it shows, I gotta say, that getting more experience in this game is a thing that you can definitely tell. Especially when learning and to dodge attack patterns and knowing when to interrupt attack animations and when, to, when you can allow them to go through. Like that, I could allow that to go through and that one as well. And as well, learning their behavior and knowing that you can bait them into doing certain moves. Like, hey, I'm baiting him to do a jump move so I can jump underneath him. Get him in range of that thing, throw a new one down, throw the firebomb. That was a bad move. But it's it, it shows in this game where if you know what you're doing, it definitely shows. Now we're baiting him to do a jump attack just so we can get through his bubble a lot easier. Alright, do another jump move then. Got a lot of status effects going on, Adam. There we go. And that's that boss fight done for. I hope you enjoyed my rambling. I'm trying to get better at my uh, recording, uh, recording talking because I find that a lot of people can more interestingly watch a game when it's actually not being talked about. Not at least not to the degree that I have been doing. Like most people say, they would rather watch a game where. 
person playing is just shooting the shit, talking about random events in their life or in their past, or giving them a story to listen to. And I tend to agree with that statement. At the start of a playthrough series, it's good to talk about the game and talk about the intricacies, and as you're learning, you can learn with your community about what things do and what they mean. But at a certain point in a playthrough's lifespan, you stop being so invested in the moment to moment gameplay and are more interested in playing the game while being able to amuse yourself or amuse your, amuse your guests, so to speak. All right. Now I'm looking at this and I'm sort of in the, sort of torn. I'm thinking of the throwing knife and I'm also thinking of the swift sword and the assassin's dagger. And since we have only four melee weapons and five ranged weapons, I'm gonna opt for a melee weapon to be upgraded. And we could actually get the Spartan sandals. The whip is something I haven't shown you, but it's very, very difficult to use in my, uh, in my opinion. So we're gonna do the sadistic cold dagger, which I think that if either we're bleeding or they're bleeding, sorry. And I'm also gonna work on this one because that's the counterpart. One of them is the one that does more damage when something is bleeding or poisoned, which is this one. And the other one is when you're below 50% health, you do always crit. All right. Shot spear is the third target, and swarmers happen. That is an interesting turn of events. Damage on bleeding targets applies flammable oil around this upon deployment. That is a strong, strong sentry. All right. Lance critical blow when the victim is bleeding or poisoned. We can actually manage to do that fairly easily. We do lose our hammer for this, but it's fine. Hello. I'm actually going to talk to you. And I, I should talk to you always when I am done with the floor. Slumbering Sanctuary is something we can't go to yet. But it's interesting to know the name at least this time around. And I'm afraid, guys, this is where I'm going to head the video off. I'm going to prepare my stream for a couple of hours. I'm going to get some food in me. Going to prepare some stuff. Going to go to the shop. Getting some food to drink and enjoy over the breaks and mentally preparing myself as well watching some videos and calming down because it is exciting guys and i don't get to show it much at least not in the videos i'm a lot more excited about this sort of stuff than you might think or than i might let on it's fun to do it make it truly gives you a form of purpose i'm not maybe, maybe purpose, but doing something productive like this which is a loose term of productivity it is it is inspiring to me as i have been inspired by others to do this as well and i'm sure that many other people have gone the same path as me and failed and i know i'm likely one of them it's like they say one in a million chance to make a big don't miss a chance until next time guys see ya